Hi guys, Josh here from Sportitude and today it's your review time and we're going to be doing a review on the Brooks Glycerin 18, this fantastic new addition to the Brooks running family. Probably, um, in my opinion, it's their highlight for the 2020 year. Um, they've obviously got a couple of very flashy racing flats and tempo shoes, but for mine, the Glycerin 18 um, has some fantastic additions to this shoe. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk um, all things, obviously, Glycerin. We're going to compare it to where it was in the 17, what changes Brooks have done to this shoe, and also profile the runner that should be considering this shoe. So first things first, let's talk about the person that should be considering this shoe and where this shoe sits in the whole market. It is a max cushioned shoe. There is a lot going on underneath the foot. So from a Brooks perspective, um, they have engineered this shoe and it's sort of sat in that category for the best part of 17 years now, of course, but to the 18th version of it. So when we're talking about a neutral foot type, what does that look like? Now we're profiling the feet, which is what I do on some of my shoe reviews, which if you have seen previously. So a neutral foot type, in theory, a static position could look something like this. So we've got quite a high arch, there's a bit of real estate between the arch and the ground, and when the runner makes contact with the ground, goes through mid-starts, a lot of the pressure can be through the middle of the foot or to the lateral side, to the outside of your foot, and then as you come through to the toe-off point, we usually see a neutral foot type to, or supernatural foot type to toe off anywhere between sort of second or third metatarsal, which is through this region through here underneath your foot. That being said though, I myself am a mild over pronator, so technically this is how my foot sits. And I've done a good three to four or four runs now in the Brooks Glycerin 18, so I haven't put huge amounts of kilometers into them. But my first impression of this shoe, it is more stable than where it was previously. So as I said, I'm a mild over pronator, so my arch does splay out ever so slightly. And this shoe felt cushioned enough, it felt supportive enough for me to potentially um, throw it into my shoe rotation for my mileage. Uh, for my mileage pair of wheels. Okay, let's talk all things cushioning because that in fact will actually dictate who should be considering this shoe. It is a max cushion shoe from the Glycerin family, so there is a lot of protection underneath the foot. So, great thing about this shoe, which I like, is obviously it's designed with heel strikers in mind. So there's a great bit of cushioning at the back of the shoe, but for those midfoot runners, which um, I fit into that bracket, there is plenty of dampening underneath that midfoot section through here as well. So you get a lot of cushioning on that first point in contact with the ground. So this shoe here will be the shoe that you have in your rotation as your everyday sort of mileage specific shoe. It's built to last. That's the thing with this shoe. So it's not a lightweight tempo or interval style shoe, although you can do it in that shoe, not saying you can't. But the shoe here is actually designed to, um, to clock up the K. So it's your everyday mileage running shoe. All right, now let's break down the Glycerin 18s and talk about the three components, the outsole, the midsole, and the upper. So we're gonna talk all things outsole first because I think that's where most of the changes come with this shoe from the Glycerin 17. So I'm gonna hold up a men's Glycerin 17 from last season through here. So underneath the foot, I'm gonna hold the shoes next to each other, Glycerin 18, Glycerin 17, and you can evidently see what's going on underneath the shoe. They've changed quite a bit in regards to the flexibility through the forefoot. So if you look at the Glycerin 17 first up, we've got six flex grooves through the front half through here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six flex grooves through there. It's a very flexible shoe. In my opinion, this was a great shoe for a, an under, under pronator, a super nated foot type. A lot of the pressure on the lateral side of the foot, and we want to encourage that foot to get over to that first metatarsal on toe off. Hence, there's a lot of flexibility in this shoe. Fantastic. A little bit narrow in the heel base as well from last season. So what I mean by that is the amount of width or the purchase with the ground underneath the heel through here in the 17 is marginally narrower than the 18. And what's that going to do? Well, it's going to provide a little bit more real estate underneath the foot for that heel striker. So when that heel striker comes down in the Glycerin 18s, having a little bit more purchase to the ground is gonna give you a great deal more confidence um, with making that first contact with the ground in comparison to its predecessor, the 17. And also notable change in the outsole is Brooks have informed us they've gone with a green rubber through the whole construction of this outsole. So essentially what that has done is the thickness of the outsole is considerably less than what it was previously. So we're only talking a couple of mil here, so I'm gonna try my best to bring it close to the camera. And I'll do the same thing with the outsole of the 17 through there. So the actual thickness of the outsole is less. So therefore, with a green rubber combination, it's going to provide a slightly softer and more durable ride underneath the foot. So um, I can't comment on the durability factor just yet, but no doubt Brooks have done their due diligence and tested this thing 
um, until the cows come home. So I'm sure I'll take their word on it. It's going to be a more durable outsole. But in regards to the flexibility, so the biggest change in this 18 is what they've done through the forefoot. So we've got essentially one, two, three, almost four and a half flex screws through here. So the flex screws don't go the whole way across the shoe like they did in the previous model. So what is that going to do to the performance of this shoe on toe off? it's gonna provide a little bit more rigidity through that front half. So if we think about the runner like myself that has a tendency to slightly overpronate through mid stance and load that medial side of your forefoot on toe off, having this encapsulated rubber through here is just gonna give that big toe a little bit more assistance and support. So provide a little bit of extra spring as well through your last phase of your gait cycle. I have ran Glycerin 16s and Glycerin 17s previously. I did like it, but it wasn't my go-to for my mileage. I, I can see um, the added benefit of this shoe, but for me, it was just too flexible through the front half. So um, that was just my, uh, my subjective opinion on the Glycerin 17. Let's go through and talk all things midsole, because I think this is where the, uh, the biggest asset of this shoe sings, uh, sings true. So we've got a DNA loft cushioning system, not only in the heel, but it goes the right way through to the mid and to the um, forefoot of this specific shoe. So it is very, very cushioned. And it's noticeably cushioned too when you put it on your foot. Sometimes when you talk about a Brooks shoe, I mean, they're soft, but they're not the softest shoe on the market. Um, but we're not going to start talking about which, which shoes are softest and which are the firmest, but they certainly play somewhere in the middle. That's just in my opinion. So they offer enough cushioning, but they also have that beautiful balance of responsiveness through the forefoot. So the DNA loft runs pure underneath your foot. So I like it. When I picked up the pace, it provided a little bit more impact. So think about when you're running a little bit faster in this shoe, you hit the ground with a little bit more force, a little bit more velocity goes through goes through your foot. So therefore you still want something that's gonna dampen that impact, but then obviously provide some propulsion. That's exactly what this midsole did for me. I liked it, my longest slower runs, but when I wanted to pick it up, it did everything I wanted to do. Cushion and response, it's great. Okay guys, let's talk all things upper with the Glycerin 18, so holding the ladies here in front of me. So first things first, internal heel counter at the back. So what that means is they have a plastic structure on the inside of the shoe through here, which gives a really good amount of support. So um, when we talk about a heel striker, even a midfoot runner in this shoe, you want to have minimal movement across the back half of your, your heel, and that's why it's locked in really nicely with that internal construction. And a little subtle thing, probably my um, favorite feature with Brooks shoes is their collar and the lining of the foam in the inside through here. Very soft, nice to touch, and very comfortable. So kudos to Brooks with how they've engineered their heel counter with this shoe. Coming through to the midfoot, there's nothing overly complicated about how they've provided the support and structure with their engineered mesh. It's a nice, a little bit of lockdown through the arch area. But as we come through to the forefoot, that's probably the, been the biggest change in regards to the fit in this shoe. Now, from um, my perspective and what we've been seeing over the last couple of years with the Glycerin 16 and 17, is that the forefoot is a little bit roomy through here. So it's quite of a boxy fit. Now, it's not excessively spacious in regards to the amount of wriggle room in the forefoot, but in comparison to its competitors, it was certainly a, a deeper fit through the front half. However, the Glycerin 18, they just ever so slightly tightened up that fit through the forefoot, so it is a slightly more secure fit. In my opinion, when I put this on, it feels pretty true to what the Ghost 12 feel, felt for me in regards to the width and the depth and the length. Um, felt very similar to how that shoe felt on my foot as well. Also, I need to talk about the widths of this shoe. So the men's comes in a standard D width and also a 2E, which is fantastic. Obviously, different colours pending the width you're looking at. And the ladies, it comes in a standard B width and a D width as well. So, of course, colours can vary depending the width you're looking at. So, great thing about Brooks is when they're executing a good shoe, they will make it available in different widths. It sings true to the brand. I really, really like that when brands do that with their, their key running shoes and they offer it in a variety of widths. So, thank you very much, Brooks. Keep that up. So, there you have it, guys. The Brooks Glycerin 18, a max cushioned neutral running shoe. And uh, yeah, in my opinion, so far in 2020, it's probably Brooks' best update yet. So guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Any comments, questions on the Brooks Glycerin 18 or any other shoes that you would like us to review, just drop it in this comments field below. And until next time, happy running. We'll see you out the road. Right.